Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. With the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting one of the most distinguished couples of the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin as Liz and Ben Marriott, bringing you the love and laughter of the marriage. I heard someone say once that childhood is a prison sentence with time off for good behavior. I suppose a lot of people feel like that. They remember the unhappiness, the fight to grow up, and they forget the warmth and good times completely. Thomas Wolfe wrote a novel called You Can't Go Home Again, but people keep trying. In our case, it all started with an ad in the Sunday Times. I showed it to Liz after the kids had gone to bed. Uh, two stir, cups could, two ack, uh, gur, wool, proof to root. What is it, Ben? The Japanese naval code? It's a real estate ad. Oh. Two-story Cape Cod on two acres. Oh, what's gur, wool? Sounds ferocious. <laughs> Garage and a well. Oh. You know, that ad's very interesting. A client came into the office today. That is interesting. And about time. Cut it out, dear. He wanted me to handle buying this house for him. You'll never guess where it is. Tanganyika? You're warm. Vermont. Oh, really? Cardiff, Vermont. Damn, Cardiff. How long is it since you were back there? Oh, 15 years. Well, I may have to go up there this weekend to search the title and complete the sale. Oh, uh, beautiful up there this time of year. There's probably snow. Probably. And skiing. That's right. And the mountains. Ben. It's all arranged, darling. We can leave on Friday. But the children... I called your mother this afternoon. She said she'd stay here over the weekend. Oh, Ben, it's like a vacation. Three whole days alone. Oh, um, is your client coming? No. Mr. Ramdan has a conference in Columbia. Ramdan? That's an unusual name. He's an Indian. Indian? A tomahawk Indian? No. No, a turban Indian. Oh. He came here with the U.N. Now he's teaching at Columbia. You should have seen him. A beard and a purple turban. Quite a sensation at the restaurant where we had lunch. Oh, Ben. What's the matter? A purple turban in Cardiff, Vermont? I wonder. Ben, there's a place on the left. Where? Oh, never mind. We passed it. Ben, I'm hungry. Well, we'll stop at the next place. You said that when we left New Haven. We are now approaching the Vermont border. What was wrong with that diner outside of Hartford? It wasn't clean. How could you tell? We went by it at 50 miles an hour. I can tell. It just didn't feel clean. Ben, there. Harry's Chop House. Where? On the left. I can't get over. There's a car passing me. Oh, Ben. What do you want me to do? Jump over him? I wonder if nylon seat covers are very nourishing. Darling, we'll stop at the next place no matter what. All right? It's all right. I've lost the will to survive. It's bound to be a place soon. Hmm. Ben, why does Mr. Ramdan want a house in Vermont? He's taking a sabbatical next year to write a book. After that, he'll use it in the summers. But why Vermont? Uh, I don't know. He saw the ad. It's far enough away from New York to be reasonable. Do you think Cardiff will be very reasonable? It's a good price. That isn't what I mean. You don't know Vermonters too well. A married one. Well, I'm not really a Vermonter, not anymore. But they're... They're very Vermont. What are you getting at? I've been thinking about the people from Cardiff. They haven't gotten over the border war with New York State, and that was in 1778. Come on, you're exaggerating. I can't imagine an Indian with a purple turban walking into Mr. Harris's grocery. Look, Mr. Ramdan is a very charming and intelligent man. He can get along anywhere. He's been all over the world. He hasn't been in Cardiff for months. Oh, can't be any more dangerous than the Khyber Pass. I'm serious, Ben. You can tell when you're in Vermont. It's a subtle, insidious change in the atmosphere. What's the matter, Ben? Subtle, insidious change in the highway. We've crossed the state line into Vermont. Hello there. 
Hello? Is there anybody here? There must be. Lights are on in the gas pumps. Well, maybe he's out back. I hope so. I want to find out where we are. I know exactly where we are, Ben. The turn off the highway is by an old covered bridge. I remember it perfectly. You also remembered the shortcut around Brattleboro perfectly. It certainly went around Brattleboro and around and around several times. They changed the road. That isn't my fault. Well, I'd better go and look for somebody. Oh, cold. You don't mind it as much up here. It's dry cold. Five above zero is cold, wet or dry. Here comes somebody around the building. Hello? Uh, hello there. He didn't even look up. He can't hear you. His ear flaps are down. He's seen us. Uh, hi there. Uh, uh, do you sell gas? Yep. Good, we're down pretty low. Mm. Uh, would you mind filling the tank with premium? Yep. Yep. You mean, you would mind? Uh Uh-huh. Why? Ain't got no premium. Delivery truck broke down over to Jamaica. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask. Oh. Well, look, maybe you can help me. How do we get to Cardiff from here? Well, if um, if I was going to Cardiff, I wouldn't start from here. No, you wouldn't. Uh, what happened to the old covered bridge by the way on that road? Burned down five years ago. You have a monitor? Well, I grew up in Cardiff. Oh. I could give you some regular gas. But you said you didn't have any. I don't. A premium. Why didn't you tell me that you had... Never mind, never mind. I know, I know. I, I didn't ask. Yeah. Uh, fill her up, you said. See what I mean? He got one look at your out-of-state license. Oh, that can't be it. Maybe he's got indigestion. Ben, that's what I'm telling you. I remember when I was a little girl how cold everything was. People just don't give themselves. I keep thinking of that purple turban. I thought you loved Vermont. I do. I... I mean, I love the traditions of individuality and and the countryside, but you've just got to face reality. Check your oil? No, no, it's all right. But uh, I'm afraid the windshield's a little dirty. Yeah, sure is. You ought to clean it sometime. (laughs) Well, I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, What do I owe you? Three seventy. Should have filled up in Massachusetts. No tax. Ethan Allen Motel. Looks all right. Clean. Anything looks all right to me now. We can stay here and go out to the house in the morning. Come on. Oh. I'll get the bags later. Mm. The office seems to be down here. Close the door. Don't want to heat the whole valley. Oh, I'm sorry. This is an address. Took Mr. Partridge off five years ago. My husband. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't grieve none now. Grief past a year is just a bad habit. Uh, we'd like a cabin for the night. Hmm. I figured that was it. Six dollars a night, double with a shower. Well, that's fine. You, um, you got luggage? It's out in the car. Got to be careful. Man and wife? Of course. Ain't so much a course as you might think. Been married long? Yes, 17 years. Hmm. Then you're not likely to be carrying a copy of the license? I'm afraid not. Well, I'll just have to chance it. Uh, We could show you pictures of our children. That don't signify. Anybody can carry pictures. Now, look here. There's no reason... It's perfectly all right, Mrs. Partridge, really. I don't have much choice. You came to foreigners, and you got to expect this sort of thing. Madam, we're very tired. We drove all the way from New York City. New now... York City? Can't we have a bed? All right. Right this way. Cabins is plain. Nothing fancy. I hold with simple things. So did Mr. Partridge. Till just before he passed on. Sent for me that last night. Made me promise to get him a bronze casket with silver handles. Said he wasn't going to snap it around hell in no plain pine box. I can understand that. He wanted to make a lasting impression. Yeah. Oh, one thing more. Yes? Pay in advance. Ben? Hmm. Ben, you sleep? Yes. 
My mattress is lumpy. I think I've got Mr. Partridge's pine box. <laughs> ben. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine Mr. Ramdan meeting Mrs. Partridge? Please. Not just before I go to sleep. It won't work. I know it won't. Let's talk about it in the morning, darling. He just won't fit in. They won't accept him. Liz, I've been driving all day. Please. Can you imagine Mr. Ramdan at the Ethan Allen Motel? Yeah. He might do very well here. What do you mean? He comes from India. He might know how to sleep on a bed of nails. <laughs> There it is, Liz. Old house, but a very good buy. Dan, I remember this house. I think I do. We used to pass it when we drove over toward Bellows Falls. I remember the shutters. Come on. Let's get in there before we freeze solid. You don't mind the cold here as much, Ben. I know. I know. It's dry. Come on. <laughs> What's the name of the owner? Jeremy Gale. Is he a lawyer? I think so. I bet I knew him. At least I used to see him at town meetings. I think he was a select man one year. So you drive up. Come on in. Thank you. Stamp your feet, Ben. I got a fire going inside. Oh, we need it. Mr. Marriott, I expect. That's right, sir. Uh, this is Mrs. Marriott. She comes from Cardiff. Oh? Moved away? Yes, I I live in New York now. Uh, well, I suppose you had good reason. I remember you, though, Mr. Gale, from town meeting. You do? I don't remember you. Oh, that'd be 20 years ago. Elizabeth Walker. Walker. Ellen Walker's daughter? Yes. I knew your pa well. Real Vermonter. Well, now, Mr. Marriott, I suppose you're authorized to handle the sale. Yes. Yes, I've final authority. I suppose you wonder why I'm selling. Well, I'm getting old. How old would you say I was? Oh, I don't know, really. Uh, I... You're scared of guessing high and hurt my feelings. Well, I'm 72. That's too old to be stuck out on a dirt road in mud time. I understand, sir. I got no family. Since I retired from the law, I've been trying to farm on this piece. <laughs> Raised hogs so skinny I had to tie knots in the tails to keep them from squeezing out twixt the pickets in the pen. <laughs> you mean this isn't a productive farm? Uh, I got fields so steep... When I plowed them with a team of horses, one horse had to ride on the other. <laughs> had chickens so thin, it took two of them to cast a shadow. Do you expect to move into town, Mr. Gale? Yep. Renting a room across from the Methodist church. Come and go as I please. Independent as a hog on ice. I thought we'd drive over to the county seat this afternoon, Mr. Gale, and search the records and then finish up by evening. Yeah. Well, I ain't so sure. I beg your pardon? I ain't talked about terms or well, the mortgage I took out four, four years ago. And I got some thinking to do this morning, too. I tell you what, you come back this afternoon. But I'll uh, be ready to do business with you then. Well, all right. All right, well, we'll see you then, Mr. Gale. It was nice seeing you again, Mr. Gale. Find what you was looking for? Uh, what? When you moved away from Cardiff. Why is he stalling? Oh, well, he's got some reason. People up here don't do things in a hurry, especially selling land. He couldn't be trying to run up the price. Oh, Ben, Ben. What? Across the street is Aunt Hattie. Who's Aunt Hattie? Mine. I mean, not a real aunt, a courtesy aunt. She knew us when we were children. Oh, she's seen us. Are you sure? Aunt Hattie has an eye like an eagle. It used to be famous. She's coming over here. She's a sweet old lady, but she used to listen on the party line. And... Hello, Aunt Hattie. Isn't it exciting seeing you again? Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth Walker, it is you. I thought so. I could tell even with that hat. You're looking fine, Aunt Hattie. I keep busy. You're not looking well. I'm not? Mm-mm. Pick it. Well, we can't all keep as well as you do. No, you can't. Not breathing that mixture of poison and soft coal they call air down in New York. You do live in New York now. Why, yes, I do. I heard that. Your mother wrote me. Said you were married to some city lawyer. I cried and cried when I read that. 
I told everybody it seemed such a shame. I remember you in high school. So such promise. Aunt Hattie, this is my husband, Ben Marriott. How do you do? Oh, we were just talking about you. I know. I heard. You ought to take care of Elizabeth. Oh, uh, well, haven't I? What about her teeth? Well, what about her teeth? You know, as long as you're up here, Elizabeth, you ought to drop into Dr. Hempstead. It's for a checkup. But I have a dentist in New York, Aunt Hattie. Well, I, uh, I wouldn't want to say a word against him, but... I uh, have every confidence in my dentist, Aunt Hattie. All the same, it wouldn't hurt to make sure. Oh, and you could drop in at Galton and Pierce. They're having a sale on hats. Well, I got this hat at Hunts Fifth Avenue. I thought as much. I went shopping down to Boston once. <laughs> Buy a thing. Why not? I can do just as well here in Cardiff without all that fancy folderol. Oh, Elizabeth, open your mouth. Hmm? Say, ah. Ah. Mm, I thought so. That New York air has your throat all inflamed. You drop into Dr. Whitcomb and, and get it painted with Argerol. But I'm all right, really. Well, he may not have a fancy office on Park Avenue in New York, but Dr. Whitcomb brought you into the world right here in Cardiff. He never left it. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Hattie. Goodbye, uh, Aunt Hattie. Hi, Mrs. Holcomb, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> So furious. What's the matter? My dentist is the top man in the Columbia School of Dentistry. I mean, Dr. Hempstead is a very good dentist, too, but so is mine in New York. I know, dear. But she just assumes he can't be. Ben, don't you understand? Understand what? What they're all saying. They think I betrayed something because I moved away. Oh, now, Liz, it's I... It's true. I remember it so well. I think that's why I came down to New York to work after college. I was so cold, there wasn't any warmth here anyway. Now, don't get upset, Liz. It isn't true anyway. You can't blame a whole state for your individual feelings. Then it isn't individual. They don't approve of you because you're from New York, and they don't warm up to me because I left Cardiff. That's why Mr. Gale delayed the sale. I know it is. If they're prejudiced against me, how do you think they'll feel about an Indian with a beard? Mr. Gale's a lawyer. Lawyers aren't immune. Look, Liz, you grew up here. You're all tied up with it emotionally. You had a hard time breaking away. I can see this with a more objective viewpoint. You don't know them as well as I do. He'll make excuses. He won't sell to Mr. Ramdan. I know he won't. Why shouldn't he? He won't. You'll see. Well, now, Mr. Marriott, I've been thinking. You have? I could sell this place to you just as easy as a eel going through a bucket of cream. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. For rights, I ought to move into town where that pill peddler Whitcomb can get to me easy. Well, that's fine. Then we can get down to business. But I ain't going to sell. You're not? No. No, I changed my mind. But, but you advertised. We came all the way up here from New York. Yeah. Well, now, I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but things has changed. Oh. I, uh, I just don't want to sell. Oh, I see. Why not? Sentiment, I guess. Sentiment? Yeah. You see, this place was raised by my grandfather. It belonged to my father till he died. I, I just decided I didn't want somebody else living here. Not while I was alive. Well, I don't suppose there's anything else to say. No, I don't suppose there is. I think there is. Liz, no. No, that... Ben, let me alone. Liz, please. I'm just pissed, Ben. I, I can't stand it anymore. Mr. Gale, why? Why don't you sell? I listened and I tried to think of a reason. I, I, I didn't want to. I, I couldn't face the truth. You couldn't, eh? No, I think it's a shame. You don't want to sell because Mr. Ramdan is different, because he's foreign, because he wears a beard and a turban. Well, now, I didn't say that. No, no, you didn't. You were just hypocritical. You made excuses. You weren't even honest enough to admit you didn't want a man like that in Cardiff. Liz, please, you don't mean I do upset... mean it. I felt it ever since we came here. I wanted to come back, but you made me glad I left. I, I don't ever want to come back. I, I'm ashamed. Well, now... I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Gale. I... 
However, I suppose I feel the same way. Well, well, before you go launching into an oration, too, maybe you folks didn't consider that I wasn't making excuses. Then why won't you sell? I said why. Maybe it got lost in the shuffle, but you might recollect nobody told me this client of Mr. Marriott's was an Indian, with or without a beard. Oh. Oh. You know, around here, we may be old-fashioned and state proud. We don't make too much of a fuss over anything. We figure... If our neighbor makes a darn fool of himself, why, that's his business. But he's got a right to it. Same way any fellow's got a right to live next door. He's got a right to wear whatever he pleases on his head. Inside his head, for that matter. And if I don't like it, why, no law says I got to listen. But but I was sure... Yeah, yeah. Well, the way it stands now, you ain't likely to believe me, so, Mr. Marriott, you draw up the bill of sale. Will you... You're selling to Mr. Ramdan? Yeah. Miss Marriott, there's some things I take serious. Cooking, cigars, and the state of Vermont. Uh, I got something over here. Wrote down on a shirt cardboard over the desk here. Uh, listen to this. If the spirit of liberty should vanish in the United States and our institution should languish... It could all be restored by the generous store held by the people in this brave little state of Vermont. Uh, know who said that? No. No, I don't. Calvin Coolidge. He was a Vermonter. He said his piece, like the rest of us do. Just like the winter. Cold, but you don't mind it because it's dry. Uh, I suppose... I... I don't know what to say. In that case, don't say nothing. Mr. Gale... And you neither. Just don't go telling anybody you're ashamed of the place you was born. Anyway, I know what it is to be a foreigner myself. You do? Yeah. My grandfather come from New Hampshire. Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of The Marriage, written by Ernest Canoy. In tonight's cast of The Marriage, Parker Family was heard as Mr. Gale. Margaret Hamilton played Mrs. Partridge. Benjamin was played by William Lipton. And Charmé Allen was heard as Aunt Hattie. The Marriage is an NBC Radio Network production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. Liz? Hmm? We got a letter today from Mr. Ramdan. How does he like Vermont? Oh, he says it's wonderful, just like the Himalayas. You don't find the cold, it's dry. <laughs> You'll enjoy that great lineup of musical entertainment Monday nights on NBC. Gordon McRae and famed Met star Mimi Benzel play the leading roles in the ever-popular Johann Strauss operetta, The Gypsy Baron, tomorrow night on the Railroad Hour. There's another half hour of great music classics when soprano Patrice Munsell appears as guest artist on The Voice of Firestone, with Howard Barlow conducting the Firestone Symphony. Later, popular baritone Ezio Pinza offers a variety of Neapolitan melodies on tomorrow's brilliant Telephone Hour concert, while Donald Voorhees conducts the Bell Symphonic Orchestra. And you'll want to top off your evening of fine listening with more merry adventures at 79 Wistful Vista with that unpredictable and hilarious pair, Fibber McGee and Molly. All part of the great lineup of listening entertainment, Monday on NBC. This is the NBC Radio Network.